You right. referred to it once as marrow music. Yeah. What did you mean by that? All the way to the bone, right? beyond the bone, right to the very center of the bone. That's where at its best that music can do that. Yeah. And also the, these cats, they play deliberately just slightly under heart rate, which is I think uh, 72 beats a minute. There was a certain gut reaction to what they were playing in the same way that it had a gut reaction to what Muddy Waters was playing. In that terms, in those respect, absolutely, yes. I just felt something vital and real and untempered with, you know, by outside influences, you know. And, uh, and I, yeah, I felt that very much similar. I thought, hey, this is a new blues or an old blues, different way, a different blues, you know, and expressed in a different way, but it hit me the same way. Mm. And that's when I started to hook up with the... Uh, with the angels as they became known slowly at the then. I mean, they weren't, they were just guys, you know. They happened to be Rastafarians. And the, the, what I really liked about the whole thing, that these were guys, you don't get it anymore. And, they, and with them pretty much gone, uh, I'm sure there are places scattered over the earth where people still live like this. But what intrigued me was, these guys would come down to fish for the day, do a bit of diving, a bit of wheeling and dealing, whatever. And then they'd, in the evening they'd go back to their village and sit around smoke and play drums and chant. And uh, no external influences and no big ideas about them, it's just what they did. And I thought, it was, well, you know, not bad. <laughs> and, not a bad way of life, and, and, and as I listened more and more to what they were playing, you know, somehow it's got to be captured in this, in this way before it goes, because inevitably it, it, it will, and there it has, basically. Come in, my little one, come in, my pretty one, come into my father's house. <laughs> and at what point did they start coming to your home and you started recording those sessions? Well, it, it wasn't very long, actually. Um, the, the day of honor was when they actually brought the drums down from the village and put them in my house. They'd never left the village before, these drums, you know. I mean, it was, so to bring them down it was like an, also like an honor, you know. Yeah. Like a gift, you know, from Ja. You know. When did the idea for the the first album come to you? Uh, as I said, nothing was planned. Uh, I used to record what we, you know, we get together three or four nights a week. I used to record it just on a cassette player. It was in '95, '96 uh, that we were playing away up in my house, you know. You know we're all having the usual fun. And there's a knock at the door, and in the, I open it up, and there stands Rob for Bernie. Mm. Uh, I hadn't seen him for quite a long time, you know, let alone in Jamaica, you know. And it was, uh, Oh, I, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. That's true. Yeah, mine broke. I know. Well, yeah. I knew you'd get. It got so much use got around rusty. here. Rusty. <laughs> rusty, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's more like it. Gone rusty. Yeah, um, it, 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 humidity. Well, the thing is that I don't, I don't want to. So he came in. He happened to be recording some stuff for. Um, the tourist board of Jamaica or something, and they had a mobile recording track. And it so happened that it was free for a few days. And, uh, and because he heard the music and he wanted to, we could just put this down and you know, take us a couple of days, you know. But so, I mean, that's the way it came about. There are a lot of weird coincidences, or, you know, Providence, however you want to look at it. And... I am 
His ideas uh, just instead of pointing microphones at instruments, was to put them around the room in three different places. And it worked. You know, I mean, it was amazing uh, to the time because, I mean, there's... So you couldn't do a lot of mixing, but what you did get was actually what was happening in the room. Yeah. You know, and uh, there was no... You couldn't get artsy with the, you know, with the track or anything. It is, it is what it is. And, uh, and suddenly I realized that was the way I wanted to record this band. Because before it had always been like, you know, more drums or more, you know, interfering with the process. And really, these guys, you want to record them. They have to, they've forgotten about microphones. They don't want to, know, you know, it's. They've got to be, feel free to do it. It's just people utilizing their own talents for, for no particular gain. And it, it was from sheer love of doing it. And that's basically uh, the the kernel of it, you know, I mean, hey, they got paid for making the record, they couldn't understand why, you know, but I have to pay you, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, we're putting a record out, it's a contract, and you got to get, the, 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 I mean, they love their money if they get their hands on it, but they, they didn't think in those terms, you know, like making something out of it, it was just, you mean people paid for this? <laughs> Just because they're so used to it, they grew up with it, and uh, it's a shame that the you know maybe the the younger Jamaicans are not. But then hey, the world goes on. You know. Let's talk about Justin, Justin yes. Hines. Hines. I mean, he's numero uno. He always yeah. was, and uh, incredibly attuned to what was going on around him. This Rastaman vibration is a positive vibration. The Rastaman do not work with no one out of his tradition. Greetings, Justin. 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 What was it about Justin that made him different from all the other people you encountered? I mean, it's so pure, you know, and flowing. Uh, and there was also the fact that Justin is also a, a professional musician. I mean, uh, I mean, he worked, he worked in England, he worked in Canada and America, you know, so he was the only other pro in other words, in the in the setup, all the other guys have never been outside of Steertown. Justin is something that hey, when you think of him, when he comes to mind, or you hear his voice, you know, you get a nice warm glow. You know, he, you, say, oh, it's, you don't even feel sad that he's gone. You know, it's yeah. like beyond that. It's uh, he lives.
Justin that gave the nod for me to sort of come just strumming an acoustic or something, you know. And like and and because he he said it was okay, the rest of them had to accept. Justin was there, he'd be on the bass drum and, and singing. On top of that, man, he had the best threads. <laughs> he was an incredible dresser. I don't know, he, he had the tailors working and uh, we were both the same size, so it was like. You know, there was, uh, hey, Justin, like that jacket, man. Oh, no, you don't. I said, if you, if you really loved it, you wouldn't have worn it up in front of me, you know, <laughs> because you know that I'm going to take it. Oh, what a joy and a comfort to leave. What are your favorite songs by him? best song that, that I know that he wrote is Oh, What a Joy and a Comfort. And that's Justin, that really expresses the man himself. You know. He's a diamond. Bread in the time is near a time. This is one of the first things I ever played on in, in you know, around 72 when we all started playing together. And that song just kept cropping up. And, uh, and so I had lots of practice, you know, over the years of saying, oh, it'd be nice to play that there. Uh, and that, uh, and I, it's just a coming together between Justin and myself. Yeah, the thing is, that it's, very, it's very easy to turn Justin into almost, you can understand why they call him Jesus, it's like Saint Justin. Is, uh, I mean, there's never a bad word from him, man, uh, ever, uh, or about him. Yeah. You know? Uh, and his, his love of music was uh, I think, uh, also the other thing that really captured me about him, his, his sheer joy of singing and playing. So, you know, with Justin passing away, it was sort of, a, so I think there's a spur, so it's like, oh, we must, you know, this is Justin's last recording. Mm. You know, and so it became an added spur to, to get it together. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a beautiful tribute to him. Yes, I hope so. I mean, every one of his fans is going to be so grateful to you for having done this. Just in one love. You've got to sit around and stand around with those guys night after night with a boom, boom. And, and you start to hear things over the top of it that are not there. You know, and, and I guess what I did with it was try to add some of those things that I was hearing. Oh, what the big fear when I brought it back to the angels was uh, how they would react to it, you know, oh, you swamped us, <laughs> and Justin was the one to he listened to it all, and then he looked at me, it was great, you know, how you have made magic out of us, <laughs> I said, you're the magic, <laughs> you know, so but there was a mutual appreciation society there.
Why you 
you follow Rasta.